the bank owns everything in your life and most people do not see this today we're going to be talking about this tweet up here cowardice derives from the fact that 99 percent of people do not want to risk what they have but in fact you have nothing the house you live in belongs to the bank you don't own their car you don't have safety in their community and you don't have peace of mind this is very profound i think but very accurate and it just goes to show you to the extent of how the tweet's worded, you know, you don't have safety in their community. The bank's owning all the houses in the community. And some neighborhoods are run down and in bad shape. And you have no choice but to live there because you can't afford anything else and you don't own anything. So this is a, this is a, I think this is probably the deepest tweet we're reacting to. So Kirby, what do you, what do you think on this? Um, it goes to my thing, and I think of the the people, the multitudes of people that I talk to about investing. And I'm always every conversation I have is usually brings in the word of investing, and I always hear the word risk, 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 risk. And then I always come to the adage that what are you risking? You already know what broke looks like. So if you take the risk. The worst thing that's going to happen is you stay in the same condition that you are. That's that's it. The worst you're going to happen is you're going to stay in the same conditions that you are. But if you battle through it, you know, go through the ups and downs, then you will put yourself in a better situation. So you're already at zero. So the worst thing that can happen is you stay at zero. And the only thing that you have is upside potential. Where is the real risk? Now, I can see that more if somebody that, you know, has a $100 million inheritance or $5 million inheritance and they just want to, you know, live life and don't want to, you know, go into poverty, but just want to, you know, have enough money to the end of their life. And they just say, hey, I don't want to risk it. I understand that because they're they're at, let's say, maybe a five and they risk to the downside is zero. You know, could, do they have upside with it? Yeah, but their their avenue of what they want out of life is still better than zero. And they're already there. So why risk it to when it's downside potential? But most people are at zero and they don't want to risk being better. And I mean, it's a lot there. It's a lot to unpack there. Like you can start going to the one that, that gets me is like in Jay-Z's song, uh, when you said you rep in the hood that your mom's written. Like you don't own nothing in that neighborhood. The Crenshaws, the up in Detroit, eight miles gonies, all those gangs and stuff that's around the way. Your parents is or you renting in those locations. You don't own nothing. So you over there protecting a block, or so-called protecting a block that you have no equity or equitable value in. But just the name on the street sign. And you don't even own that. The only thing you're doing is bringing down the property values in these neighborhoods. And you feel good about that. And then you got the people who, and Alex, you know, this is a pet peeve of mine. There's people, you know, they go 99% finance on a house. and talking about, oh yeah, I own a house now. No, there's no different from buying a house and I know you're going to have the the naysayers out there oh well well if, if you hold it for a couple of years then you can get you have equity and then you can sell it but you still got to find some place to live but back to my original statement is when you go buy a house in your finance there's no difference from renting the house because the only thing you did is told the landlord which is the bank that hey landlord you don't have to worry about the repairs I'll have to worry about it because just like with the landlord and you're renting if you stop making those payments on that house, they're coming to kick you out. Only thing you only thing you change was the responsibility of who who has to do the repairs, who has to pay the taxes. That's the only thing you did. And then you see people sit in the house 20, 30, 40, 50 years, because of course you know they're gonna refinance out and take some capital out and do nothing with it. So they're in there all that time to they pass away and then their kids fighting over homes. They 
they're 50 years and then they don't have a job. The Social Security can't cover the payment. They get evicted from homes they've been in for 50 years. So you're no different than the tenant. So if you add zero, why not risk it to go to the upside? Because the worst place you can go is to stay where you're at. That looks what you got. Yeah, taking risk is one that a lot of people don't want to do. And that's the best spot to be in when you have nothing because you have nothing to lose. And you have to have that mentality and understand that you have nothing to lose. So go for it. Take the risk. And especially, and it's probably now it's probably more um, stereotypical or often said, but I, I, there's a lot of videos where they always talk to young kids like Gary Vee or other influencers talking to young kids and telling them, you're young, you have time, you have no responsibility, take the risk. And it's true. If there's any young people listening, that is the time to start because you can mess up, you can fail. And I don't think maybe that's often understood to the fullest extent, but it's just like, you don't have kids more than likely. You don't have a house, you don't have a car. You just maybe got a job just out of high school. Take that money and try to invest it into something and figure something out and start early. And the earlier you can start and the more risk you can take at an early age, the more mistakes you can avoid as you continue to progress. And I think that is the only thing that holds people back from potential success in their life is taking that risk. Yeah. And and for people and the viewers watching, let's not get it twisted. I mean, Alex, he sounded like he came straight out of uh, Harvard University invest investment thesis class. Alex, when he started investing, he was young. Alex didn't want to take the risk. I mean, he didn't know what to do, but he had the aptitude to say, all right, well, I'll save my way until I figure it out. Alex, when he started investing, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't uh, pro risk. He was very risk averse. Only thing Alex did was some crazy. It was like, hey, I got this crazy guy over here named Kirby saying doing this. I'm just gonna do it, and then if I'm broke, I know I can go back to saving money. That's that's how he got here. Let's let's be honest. That's how he got here. It wasn't no, it wasn't no. Hey, he read 50 million investment books and things like that. He went out on a leap of faith to say, hey, I'm gonna take the risk. I mean, yeah, I, the you know, little nest egg that I saved up, I can lose it. But the downside is I lose it. I'm still, you know, I still have my house, still have my, my cars with the uh, side view mirror taped to the side. You know, <laughs> still, still, uh, you probably can see the, you could probably still see the road on the ground when you're looking through the floorboards of his car. <laughs> but that's, but that's the worst that it was going to go for him. It wasn't, you know, and then he took the risk. And then next thing you know, one step added to two steps. You know, he started investing in stocks. He took the stocks. And then, I mean, I think you had the online business already. So you did got the online business. You started, started investing in stocks. Now you're starting to invest in real estate. So he's up to five properties now. And that's just by taking a risk. But the worst thing that was going to happen to him was he still would have been at the same place he was at when we first met. That's what people don't want. People think for some immaculate reason that, oh, I'm living a life. I'm working 40 hours a week. Some people 70 hours a week. All my money go to bills, 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 and I go back to work. So if you take the extra money that you got from after bills, instead of going out and partying and clubbing and doing cookouts or whatever the hell your family do and y'all do and take that money and risk it, the worst thing that's going to happen if that money that you're risking don't make it is you go back to working 70 hours a week and you keep doing what you already been doing. Nobody's not saying, hey, mortgage the house, sell everything, put it all in the stock market, put it all in real estate, put it all in buying businesses and put your family uh, on a one brick away from being kicked out the house. Nobody's saying that. The only thing people saying is find extra money, make extra money or use the extra money you have besides your obligations and put it to work for you for your future instead of doing all the crazy things that you do that doesn't generate income. You don't need another drill after you got five. Invest the money. 
You don't need a 72 inch flat screen TV when you already got a 65 inch flat screen TV. Invest the money. You don't need to go spend all this money on Christmas so your kids can forget about what the hell they bought or they tore up all the toys by January. Invest the money. That goes for every holiday for me, but that's that's where it starts. And then when you get the ball rolling and you get more knowledge and understanding, then you'll find more ways to make money to make uh to make more money to invest that money to keep growing. That's all Alex did. That's all I did. That's it. It's no secret formula. There's no secret sauce. It's information out there everywhere. I'm not saying, hey, you gotta listen to us. Listen to anybody that's actually out there on the grind doing the work. Alex, you got anything else for wrap it up? We'll wrap it up there. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.